we start today animal kingdom the entire biological world is differentiated into two groups kingdom animalia and kingdom plantae today we start with kingdom animalia which is subdivided in three large sub kingdoms namely protozoa parazoa and metazoa protozoa includes the unicellular organism without tissue organization and the only phylum representatives are phylum protozoa the parazoans are multicellular without tissue grade organization and only phylum representatives are phylum porifera the metazoans are truly multicellular with true tissue organizations which include nidaria to chordata obviously which includes nidaria tinophora patelminthes ascalminthes anelida arthropoda mollusca and the highly specialized most group as chordata we start today with the first gallery of phylum protozoa truly unicellular and microscopic some of the representatives still may be asked that being microscopic still they are visible under naked eye so protozoa visible under naked eye the such type of example stands as elphidium the first point if it is like this the second point should be body may be supported by one or many nuclei so maybe uninucleate or maybe multinucleate even some of the representatives are found as binucleate ones locomotion supported by pseudopodia cilia or maybe flagella in such cases which may be a point to be noted here contractile vacuole is serving as the excretory structure the fifth point is again very interesting usually reproduces by binary fission multiple fission or in peculiar forms of multinucleated ones they may exhibit a specialized mode of reproductive strategy which is plasmotomy so the protozoans are unique in several senses they are exhibiting autotrophic chemoheterotrophic or in certain cases symbiotic nutrition the protozoans are having large type of food vacuoles present in their body which may serve as a structure to ingest food particles and to digest their eat next we start with phylum porifera as spore bearers the body is a flower vase like structure which is being supported by a very important apical aperture which you call as a sculum the body may be supported by many pores the central hole is called spongocele a number of dermal pores you are getting as ostia the body is sessile in adult condition so adult seems to be sessile supported by distinct canal system as a structure which is permitting water transport inside the body through these ostia so canal system may be of three types as conoid 
cyclonoid leuconoid type. The body is essentially diploblastic. If you ask me what is the meaning of the term diploblastic, the body is being supported by ectoderm and endoderm with mesoglia in between. So you can write here ecto, you can write here endo, and you can write here mesoglia in between, which is a very important structure here. At the same time, these organisms are possessing two distinct larval forms. The larval forms are including parenchymula and amphiblastia. The sponges, usually being very specialized member of the water body, especially of marine origin, used to reproduce by gemule. So, gemule is serving as the way of reproduction. So, the next phylum starts with phylum Nidaria. It was once upon a time believed to be a member of Silentareta. So, the term is Silenteron. But before that, we should say they are equally diploblastic like the poriferan groups of organisms. But these Nidarians possess nidoblasts as a distinct prey catching cell, and the nidoblast may be of penetrant, glutinant or volvent category. The penetrant ones, they can pierce the prey, injecting some poisonous fluid inside. The glutinant is wrapping the body with a glue-like structure and volvent is coiling around the, I mean the prey body with thread-like structure. If all of you remember, the poison is supposed to be hypnotoxin a paralytic toxin containing protein and phyllon, which may be supposed to be a very, very chemically active poison for the small invertebrates. The Nidarians are possessing polymorphic colony. What do you mean by the term polymorphic colony here? Here is a very important structure that they have got two types of fundamental structures here one the polyp, the other the medusa. So actually, in course of the reproductive mechanism, polyp is giving rise to medusae and medusae goes to development of polyp, which is supposed to be an alternation of generation and we call it metagenesis. The polyp is actually associated with asexual reproduction, while the medusae is for sexual reproduction. In several cases, the Nidarian members are having a number of larvae like Hydrula, Ephyra, and Planula. For testing your understanding of this lesson and more videos, log on to www tubelessons.net